So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmaduhu wa salli ala Rasul al-Kareem. Amma ba'd, today we're going to talk about the man who breaks the cross. Because this hadith, when we take it through the proper methodology, uh, becomes an issue. Because the Qur'an tells us that a group of Christians will be nice to Muslims. And another group of Christians, they will not be nice to the Muslims. And the Qur'an goes further to tell us the qualities of both groups. But first, a general principle mentioned about the Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah mentions بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن الذين قالوا إن نصارى. Now in terms of methodology, we would look into all of the ayat of those whom who say إن نصارى. We are Christians. أخذنا ميثاقهم. We took a covenant from them, a pledge from them. And they forgot a great portion of what they were told to be mindful of. So, And so, as a punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put hatred and division and enmity against one another. Till the day of judgment, there will be Christians that disagree with one another. Just like you have the ayans al ma'idah that there will be a group that will follow Jesus till the day of judgment. There will be a group of Christians that will disagree with others amongst each other till the day of judgment. وَسَوْفَ يُبَيِّنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَسْنَعُونَ And soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform them of the things that they used to make up, manufacture. So this tells us that the Christians will be in disagreement or those that say, those that say they are Christians will be in disagreement with one another till the day of judgment. And then, what does the Qur'an tell us? Before we look at the hadith, amongst them will be Christians who will fall into this category. The Christians and the Jews will never be happy with you. The Judeo-Christian civilization will not be happy with you until you follow them. Say the guidance is the guidance from Allah. And if you follow their desires after knowledge has come to you, you have no helper and no friend and no protection from Allah. Allah will raise your protection if you bow down to the Judeo-Christian civilization's demands. So, what have I discussed so far before we discuss the hadith, which is the most important topic today, about the man who breaks the cross. There will be a group of Christians. There will always be Christians differing with one another. Till the day of judgment. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And just as we look at all of the ayat that say, إِنَّا نَصَرَىٰ We are Christians. We might as well also look up all the ayat that use the word, إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Now, there's another group of Christians Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, what? And then there's another group of Christians, you will find in the future, who are not part of the Judeo-Christian civilization, nor part of the Judeo-Christian agenda. At a time when the people of Bani Israel will show, and the Jews, they will show their enmity towards you and the pagans. 
وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ Most severe amongst the people. عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا For those that will oppose the believers. الْيَحُودُ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا And those that are pagans. وَلَتَجِدَنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبَهُمُ الْمَوَدَّةَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى And you will find those nearest in affection and in love. To the believers are those who will say we are Christians. Why? What is the conditions that they have in their area, in their in their terrain? They have ذلك بأنهم and ذلك بأن منهم قسيسين. This is because they have number one priests, وروحبان and monks, وأنهم لا يستكبرون and these are people that are not proud. So they have to have these qualities in that area. And then those are the Christians that will show affection to the Muslims. And so all the Christians will not be the same till the Day of Judgment. The Christians themselves will be divided into different groups till the Day of Judgment, including many Christians who will deny Isa والسلام, and may even perhaps think he's the Antichrist. Allahu A'lam. Okay. And they will believe in the Antichrist as the Messiah. Now with this in mind, okay, now with some of these verses of Qur'an in mind, we now go to the saying of the Prophet ﷺ, in which we will now look at a few issues. I'm going to read the English first, and then go into the Arabic. The Romans will enter into a priest treaty with you, the Prophet said. Then they will, they will fight one another as enemies. Meaning the Christians will fight other Christians. They will be in different groups. One of those groups Muslims will be with. And you will be victorious and you will collect the spoils of war and be safe. Then you will come back until you stop at a meadow with hillocks. Now this is interesting. I'm not going to go into this part today about the meadow with hillocks. A man from among the people of the cross will raise the cross and say the cross has prevailed. We won because of the cross. Then a man among the Muslims will become angry and go break the cross. Then the Romans will prove treacherous, breaking the treaty for a fierce battle. Now, on the very onset, okay? The Prophet said, the Romans will make sulha with you, negotiations with you, a treaty with you, a sulha, a negotiation of peace. And you will fight with them and you will get the spoils of war with them. Hatta, and then you will go to this place where the meadow is, okay? And then, رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّلِيبِ And then a man from amongst the people of the cross, from the people amongst the cross, okay? فَيَقُولُ uh, He will raise the salib and he will say, فَيَقُولُ غَلَبَ الصَّلِيبِ The cross has prevailed. So here's a treaty between Muslim groups with Christians and Christians and Muslims have this peace treaty and a man from amongst their men says the cross has become superior. So a man from amongst the Muslims stands up. And then he stands up and then what he does? He breaks the cross. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ at that time يَغْدِرُ الرُّومِ وَيَجْتَمِعُونَ لِمَلْحَمَةً that at that time they will betray you and and get gathered together for the malhama. Now I have some questions about this hadith, but let's read it in English here also, so everybody's clear with me, and we have to go through the proper methodology. Okay, a man from among the people of the cross will raise the cross and will say the cross has prevailed. Then a man among the Muslims will become angry and go break the cross. Then the Romans will prove treacherous and they will gather for a fierce battle, it says. Now, 
let me ask you all a very basic question. If I'm in a battle, I'm one of the soldiers of the Muslim army, we are fighting with the Christian army, and one of the Christians says, we won because of the cross or our Christ or whatever, am I allowed as a Muslim to go and break his cross? No. Why is this man allowed to go and break his cross? And then the hadith says, after he breaks the cross, the Romans become treacherous. Wait. What does it say about the Muslim? Let me show you the words. A man amongst the Muslim becomes angry so much that he breaks the cross. Tell me, is this the behavior of the Prophet? Is this the behavior the Quran teaches us? Doesn't the Quran say, don't mock their gods, lest they end up mocking your real God? Don't make fun of their gods? Doing this, is this not itself treachery? Breaking the cross, is uh, uh, while you are in peace negotiations, like the Prophet had peace negotiations with the Quraysh in Hudaybiyah. He didn't break the idols while the peace treaty was intact. He broke the idols after the peace treaty was broken. Because while you're in the peace treaty, you're in the peace treaty. So if there is a sulha between the Muslims, how is this man going and breaking the cross? Tell me, is this right that a Muslim will go and break the cross? Is it right that you go to your neighbor and break his cross? Of course, anybody, any Muslim using his fitra or his common sense or the one who really knows more than surface knowledge of the deen will say, no, this is not okay. This is would fall into the category of la ikrah fi deen. Breaking the cross is like you're forcing them to become Muslim. So number one, we have to resolve this issue about why this man is breaking the cross. And maybe we might even ask, who is this man? And maybe we might ask other questions, which I might come to or might not come to. We'll see, inshallah. And then the hadith continues, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ تَغْدِرُ الرُّوم At that time, the Romans will become treacherous. Because of what? Because of a mistake a Muslim does. And they will gather their armies against you. So, the first problem from a perspective of methodology, methodology is the most important thing. The most important thing is methodology. Your methodology, if you're clear in your mind, then it, as it gets refined over time, you will make less mistakes, inshallah. The methodology tells us Christians will be divided into different groups, and here the hadith tells us Muslims and Christians will be allies against other Christians. Good. But the same hadith tells us, <coughs> and this hadith from that perspective is, con is confirming what the Quran is saying. لَن تَرْضَانْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَنْ نَصَارَ The Jews and the Christians will not be happy. Judeo-Christian civilization is never going to be happy with you. Those Christians that are at that camp, they'll never be happy with you. There's another camp of Christians, they'll be happy with you. And this says there will be a priest treaty with the Muslims. And the Christians and the Muslims are fighting. We also know from the Quran that to break anyone's cross is wrong. And hence... It cannot be called treacherous. It has to be accepted. Yes, we made a mistake. We need to rectify this. We are sorry that one of our guys did this. He did not listen to the command or he did not take this as a, a command from the Khalifa necessarily, which I'm going to discuss in a second. So the Quran confirms and the Hadith confirms that there will be Christians with the Muslims and Christians against, and Christians against the Muslims. Now, this hadith, when you look at ask another question to yourself. First of all, this hadith, somebody has the right to say 
I'm not going to look at this hadith. Why? Because it contradicts the teachings of Quran and it contradicts the general notion that there will be Christians that will be showing you love. Over here it's showing that there was peace and then there was war. So one can say, I put this hadith on hold, but let's continue. Let's ask ourselves another question of methodology in the hadith literature. Is there somebody, according to the hadith literature, who has the right to break the cross? Is there somebody who has the right to break the cross? And now, the answer to this is yes. There will be one who has the right to break the cross. And who will be that? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in many, many traditions, the hour will not be established until the son of Mary descends amongst you as a just ruler. He will break the cross, kill the pigs, and abolish jizya. So he's the man who's going to break the cross. We know that there will be differences amongst Christians and Muslims till the day of, uh, between the Christians themselves till the day of judgment. So Jesus is the one who is going to break the cross. And many, many more ahadith say that Jesus will break the cross than this hadith. Even though that hadith, the one we read before, is not in Bukhari, not in Muslim. It is in Ibn Majah. The Prophet said, وسلم, by the one in whose hand is my soul, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي Okay. Ibn Maryam will soon descend amongst you, judging justly. He will break the cross, kill the pig, remove the jizya. Wealth will be abundant. And there are hadiths that mention this. But there is one that I want to show you. And these are all the same ahadith. This one is in Sahih Muslim. This one is in Sahih Bukhari. Okay. This one is in Abu Dawud. Same hadith. This one is again in Bukhari. So now who is this man that breaks the cross? If we were to accept this hadith. Now you have one of two options as a methodology. Either you can say, well, the hadith that mentions the sulha and breaking the cross, I don't accept it because it seems to go against Quran. Fine. But there's another route. And the route is to maybe bring the ahadith together with the Quran in a way that makes more sense. But, Whatever ta'wil you give has to be under the teachings of Qur'an. The Qur'an, all, the hadiths also tell us that the man who will break the cross is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Not one, but almost most of the Sasita books, Abu Dawud, Ibn Majah, Bukhari, Muslim, they all mention this hadith that it is Jesus who will break the cross. And the hadith that I was trying to look for, mentions Jesus as a man who will be just and rule the world. And the Prophet has used this word for Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So now the point being is, who is this man that breaks the cross and then some Christians will gather to fight against this man? One way of bringing everything together is that this man will be Isa himself. He will have the authority to break the cross and he will know breaking the cross will have certain consequences that a group of the Christians, not all of them, a group of them will gather to, to for the one of the last battles of Malhama. This is a possibility. That when he breaks the cross, a group of the Christians who differ amongst themselves will fight against the Muslims. A group of them will fight the Muslims. And it's a possibility. 
But one thing is clear. There are many more ahadiths that say Jesus will break the cross. Then the ahadiths that mention this man will break the cross. And so now let me take you back to the Quranic verse that discusses this issue in some. And that is ayah number 14 of Sutul Ma'idah. وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى And amongst the Christians, there were some who called themselves Christians. أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَهُمْ We took their covenant. فَنَسَوْا حِذًّا مِمَّا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ And they forgot a lot of portion of what they were told. Right? فَأَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةَ so there is adawatan, adawatan, adawatan is what the Jews and the pagans will show Muslims. Wal baghda, hatred. Adawa is to show, kind of like, uh, I is to manifest the anger, to oppose. Baghda is like also like ghadab, very similar. If you look at the where Baghdad, Baghdad is, it just, they just make, they make each other angry. Okay? And so, for example, the Catholics can't stand the Protestants, the Protestants can't stand the Catholics, and the Catholics can't stand the Orthodox, and the Orthodox can't stand the Catholics. Have you ever seen them talk about each other? Maybe you haven't seen that. But this, this is like one of the amazing verses of Quran because it's discussing how they feel about each other. And one group, one sect of Christianity hates the other sect of Christianity. And this is how it is. And amongst these different groups, there are some that also hate Muslims. And there are some amongst them, especially in a certain time that could be now, that where they will find an alliance with the Muslims. But the man who breaks the cross is either Jesus himself or the Rawi, the narrator that mentioned this hadith, confused the role of Isa with this understanding that the Christians and Muslims will come to an alliance. Either he's referring to Jesus, or he came to a he forgot and mixed the alliance of the Muslim because the Quran tells us clearly this is where you will find solace. This is where you will find love and true uh you can say partnership and the hadith also confirms this and we know isa is the main person that will break the cross and he is the one who has the right to break the cross and when he breaks the cross there will be many christians who will then maybe be upset and gather against the muslims it's possible it is not qatari it's not absolute because only something that the prophet said clearly is absolute when you connect the dots, whether it's, you know, if it's a type of Dalalatul Nas or Dalalatul Hishara, that it may be. One cannot be 100% sure. You know, what is Qat'i is Qat'i, and what's not Qat'i is not Qat'i. You have to keep these two things separate. The adding things to what we can say for sure is what Quran says. What we can say for sure is what the Quran says. The hadith confirms of what the Quran says. Muslims and Christians will have an alliance and fight against other Christians. Sounds right. There will be a man who will break the cross, but when you look at the hadith literature, the man who breaks the cross is Isa himself. And Allah has divided as a punishment to the Christians into different groups. And they have enmity and hatred towards one another. And it is possible that when, if it is Isa that the Hadith is referring to, that a group of the Christians, that when Isa gets angry, that don't you know I'm Isa? Don't you know I'm Isa? And you're picking up the cross, still picking up the cross? And then he will say, let's, let me break this cross. And the treaty that the Muslim, because him being a prophet of Allah sent to them, the rules kind of change. He's the one who has the right to break the cross because it was done in his name. Why are you doing this in my name? 
So he said, don't do this in my name. So truly no one has the right to break the cross. So it does confirm from the Quran as well as the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that there will be a treaty between Muslims and Christians. No one has the right to break the cross more than Isa Is it possible that the hadith since it's a say hadith, even though it has few turqs. But the hadith is saying what it is saying. Yeah, it's possible. But if it contradicts the Quran, and we're asking Allah for guidance, then it is not wrong. Rather, it is preferred to reject a hadith that contradicts the Quran. Especially if there are other ahadith saying someone else like Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, who has more right to break the cross, will break the cross. Especially if it is wrong for a soldier to break a cross of another people because he is angry that they are praising their God, rather than doing the prophetic da'wah. So, this hadith could be rejected, or you have to come up with some explanation where, for example, maybe this person is Isa. That the Prophet of Allah is referring to. Maybe not. Maybe the explanation could be that Rawi, the narrator, became confused between different events of the end times. The breaking of the cross is an event of the end times. The pact of the Christians and the Muslims is an event of the end times. Maybe he wasn't too sure. So, the other thing I want to share with you, inshallah, very quickly is some of the riwayat on this, uh, uh, sorry, the sharh of this hadith that you can find in the books of hadith. So, في هذا الحديث يخبر النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عن حديث يقع مستقبلا. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ gives us khabar, information about something that will happen in the future. And this will happen in a time period between the Muslims and the Romans when there is a treaty between them. And then there will be a fighting between the Muslims and the Romans. بعد نقضة الروم الأحد الذي بينهم after the Romans break the oath that is between them وبين المسلمين and the Muslims فيه يقول خبر خبي it is in the in the information of the hadith أن نوسى على مخبر رجل أن أصحاب النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عن حذنا so they asked about this peace treaty وَهِيَ فِطْرَةٌ الَّذِي لَا تَكُونُ فِيهَا كِتَالٌ بَيْنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْنَصَارَةِ This time period, known as Hudna, and also called Fitra, is a time period where Muslims and Christians would not be fighting. وَيَقَالُ لَهُ سَمِعْتُ النَّبِي مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُلُوا So he said, I heard myself with my ears, the Prophet saying, سَتُصَالِحُونَ أَيْ you will have a peace treaty. يَكُونُ هُنَالِكَ صُلْحٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الرُّومِ So you'll have a peace treaty between them and the Romans. يَكُونُ صُلْحًا آمِنًا And it will, in another narration, it says صُلْحًا آمِنًا A peaceful treaty. أَيْ يُحْدِثُ فِيهِ أَمَنْ It will happen in a time of peace. But together they will be fighting. فَتَ فَتَغَزَّوْنَ أَنْتُمْ وَهُمْ أَدُوٌ You both will have a common enemy that you will be fighting against. أَيْ سَتْ سَيَكُونُ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ تَعَاوَنٌ فِي غَزْوَةٍ عَدُوٍ مُشْتَرَكٍ So you will have تَعَاوَنٌ You will have You can say تَعَاوَنُ عَلَى الْبِرِّ You will have cooperation in the battles and over the same enemy that you share. مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ That will be like behind you. مِنْ خَلْفِكُمْ فَانْتُنْصِرُونَ And you will be given victory. أَيْ 
yuhaqqaq lakum nasra that the, the victory will be true for you wa aidan and also uh tagnamun and you will have ghanaim tuhsaluna ala ghanaim min al amwal and you will have a lot of treasures come in okay wa taslamun ay takunu lakum as salama min qital wal jarh and there will be a time period of safety but also these wars will be happening okay and it'll be a time of it seems like a great economic growth thumma tarji'una an aduwikum then when you come back from your enemy hatta uh, until this field okay let's a rawdatun uh murtafi'un it is going to be like a, a garden that has like a hilltop okay we hiya ardun wasi'un fiha nabatun kathir it is a large piece of land that has a lot of plants in it. I have a feeling, but I need to do proper research. I have a feeling this is referring to Jerusalem. And so a man of the Christians will raise the cross. The, the cross that he worships. Okay. Uh, uh, Ramzul lin Nasari, and this is a symbol of the Christians, the cross. Yaqulu ghalaba salib. He will say, "This cross is what gave us victory." I, anna Nasrani yarjiu Nasra lil salib. Okay. So he will make this proclamation that we won because of the cross. Fa yaghdibu rajulu min al Muslimin. And a man amongst the Muslims will be angry. And then what will he do? Yukastiru salib. He will break the cross. Which would be what? For a Muslim to do, it would be haram to do that. Yukastiru salib. Wa dhalika taghduru rum. And at that time, you will then fight against a rum. Ay fi hadha al waqt yaghdibu rum. وَيَنْقُضُونَ أَحْدَهُمْ مَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Romans will, Romans will be the room, the European, Russian, all those. Most likely, if this hadith is true, it's referring to Russia. But there seems to be, as you can see, the contradictions are there. But I'm reading to you the shar. هَذَا الْوَقْتِ يَغْدِبُ الرُّوءُ وَيَنْقُضُونَ أَحْدَهُمْ مَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ تَجْمَعَ أَيْ تَحْشَرُ الرُّومِ and its men will come gather together for the malhama now we have to ask ourselves a question why did not the previous generations see this problem this blaring what could be a blaring problem of contradiction with the Quran and a blaring problem within the tradition itself that somebody goes and breaks the cross and then we still blame the other side for being the ones that are treacherous. The reason is, it's not that our ulama were sleeping, or that they didn't have insight, or they didn't develop a methodology. In fact, that is the one thing that they did, so that this work continues. But it was just that these things were not relevant, and our scholars are not time wasters to read or to do deep investigation on things that are not relevant they left some of these things even intentionally for a time where it would be more relevant and so when it is now relevant we do the proper investigation we do a thorough examination and what i'm going to give you one example inshallah ta'ala of something you will find interesting okay let me show you how end of time sayings of the Prophet, because this is where shaitan wanted to really get to the ahadith that have to do with end of time because he was really bothered about this and really knew that this would be uh, so for example I'm going to show you Samiatu, the same word I myself heard from who? Samiatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul ashaddu nas alaykum room the most severely against you will be the Romans. Ashaddu nas alaykum rum. And the Quran says, Ashaddu nas over you will be the Yahud and the 
Hanud, the pagans. In this hadith, either it is an addition or an extension of the Quran, or it is contradiction to the Quran. Either you fix this with Quran in such a way, but this hadith is known to be what? It's now da'if. It's weak, weak hadith. But I'm giving this hadith to you as an example of how. Let me just show you, okay, so that we're absolutely clear. You will find most certainly the most severest against the Muslims, Al Yahud, Ashraku, and those who are pagans. Now, if you take this weak hadith, right? And you want to fix it with the uh, the, um, the the this narration, then you can say the Judeo Christian civilization and the particular uh, type of Jews that speak Yiddish language or used to speak Yiddish language is referring to them. So they will be Roman Jews, and then that can include them. Whatever methodology you adapt, you have to know fiqh al The understanding of the situation you're trying to study. For example, uh, if somebody is trying to study about uh, some issue of, uh, uh, let's say, transplant of a heart transplant. Okay, So they have to know the field of heart transplant, how it works, how... Everything is done, whether it's allowed, not allowed, can you, right? And then you can, and you have to know the technical aspects of heart transplant, as well as then know about the fiqhi aspects of transplant. So the fiqhi aspects of heart transplant is, can you actually own someone else's heart? Well, you can own an entire slave, so maybe you can own an entire heart. Right? As an example. This is like one of the examples Muhammad Shafi gave for a heart transplant or other types of transplants. The point being, you have to know the, the fiqhi aspect, the Islamic and the Sharia aspect, or whatever aspect within the deen is required, like in the case of Islamic eschatology, it won't be Sharia based, but it'll have its own principles. And then you also also understand the situation. If you're reading these ayahs and you don't know the situation around you, you're not going to be able to do much with it but if you know the situation and then you have the ayat in front of you and you understand these are living verses of the Quran they're going to guide you so now you have to make a choice what would you like to do and please tell me in the comment section what would you like to do take the hadith of the man of the cross and just put it aside or would you like to bring it together in a way that is makes sense but makes sense under the Quran but no matter which of the two you choose, you have to remember the status of things. If you bring it together, you still have to remember, well, there are issues with this hadith. So, uh, you can just take it as dhanni, as information, but not qat'i, not definite. But something back in of your mind, you will have to find support for your whatever idea you have from either the Qur'an for, or from other ahadith to put it all together in a way that is organic and Qur'an-centric. Fits with the Qur'an. It cannot be in contradiction to the Qur'an. And I gave you that example of the hadith that the most severest people upon the Muslims will be the Romans. That's a hadith. It's a weak hadith. And then the ayah of Qur'an. Of course, if you had to choose, you're going to choose the ayah of Qur'an. But if you had to, if you chose to put the two together, well, they better fit together, first of all. You can't just randomly just come up with some explanation to put it together and it's not fitting together. But if you do put it together, then you can say, okay, Al-Yahud, Roman. This is referring to the a certain group of Jews that will lead the Roman people, for example, I'm just saying. And then that's how this hadith will now fit. The man who breaks the cross, that's a sin. And the treachery then would not be on part of the Christians, it would be on part of the Muslims. Or you can take the hadith that the Prophet is saying this is going to happen and it's going to be wrong. And the Prophet is telling us that maybe Muslims will do wrong things to Christians. It's also possible. And it will have dire consequences. 
It is also possible when you look at the ayah that I showed in the beginning that there will be Christians of different groups. Maybe some of those groups will fight with us till the day of judgment. Ila yawm al qiyamah. So there will be differing Christian groups till the day of judgment. Maybe some of them will not like even Christian to Christian or Christian to Muslim. They will not. They'll be with لن ترضانك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم. So anyway, here's some thought, and so share with me your thoughts on my thoughts. جزاكم الله خيرا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.